This is an overview of the PostGrid widget by Unlimited Elements for Elementor. I'm going to teach you how to create an advanced post grid with custom post types. Inside of the grid items, we're going to populate them with custom fields created by ACF. We're going to connect the grid item links to a dynamic pop-up that will show a quick view of the posts with arrow navigation between the posts and a close button. We're going to add filters and each time the grid will be filtered there's going to be a sequence animation and in case there's more grid items than the grid can handle there's going to be a pagination. So without no more further ado let's jump in and get started. This is an overview of the post grid widget by Unlimited Elements. In the widgets pane, I'm going to search for post grid and drag and drop that inside of my Elementor canvas. As you can see what this widget does, it represents your posts inside of a grid layout where you can determine the gap between the grid items and the number of columns. Just as an example, I'm just gonna change that to four. You can also see this is a responsive field. So, I'm going to dive in and we're going to go over all of the different settings over here and you can see that it's separated into general layout additional data connected widget settings sequence entrance animation post query post pagination and filtering so i'm going to try to go over everything it's a lot of features a lot of advanced tools but they are all simple to use so let's dive in and the first thing I'm going to want to talk about is the post query. Over here we have four different types of post sources. Right now we're in custom post. That means this is a custom query. So you can determine the query by all the different types of fields that we have over here. And there are a lot of fields. Uh, but the most popular ones are under here in include by. So there's all sorts of ways to include which posts you want to show in your uh, grid. And you can also exclude some of these uh, by using all sorts of exclude rules. What I'm going to do actually over here is I'm going to use a custom post type, which is really important because not all post widgets know how to handle uh, custom post types. So let's search over here and the custom post type I'm going to use is going to be team members. So over here you can see now it's showing the team members that I have as posts, which looks pretty awesome, right? And over here, if you wanted to, you could include uh, by specific terms. So for example, it knows to recognize that under the post type team members, there are these three types of terms or taxonomies. And I could choose to show only the developers from uh, that post source. That's not the case what I want to do over here, but I just wanted to show that it's possible to select different types of categories and stuff like that to show or filter or query your posts on the page. The next part I want to talk about is actually the layout. So over here inside of layout, I'm just going to change a couple of stuff over here. So let's say I don't want the text to show over here. So I'm just going to close the text over here. And now you can see that it's showing just uh, the name of the team member and a read more button, which is linking to the post. That's pretty awesome. The next part I want to talk about is actually the additional data. So as you can turn on or off each part inside of the layout, also in additional data, you can turn on or off different parts over here inside of this grid. So just for example, if we want to show the date that the post was added, we can 
turn this part over here and we can see that uh, date that the team member was added. Of course, that's not the case when we're having team members, but if it was news or a blog post or stuff like that, this could be a handy feature. So what I'm gonna do over here is actually a bit advanced. We have some custom fields inside of the posts, and what I want to do is show those over here. So I'm gonna click debug meta fields, and what this is going to do, it's going to show me all the meta fields that are associated with that post source or that post type. So as you can see, we have over here uh, one that's called phone number and another one that's called email. And I'm going to use those strings, those names to populate the data. So we can close this after we saw how it's written over here. And I'm going to select over here, show custom meta and I need to put inside of the field name over here the exact name that I saw earlier inside of the debug. Now, in some cases, you might already know what that is because you're the one that created those custom fields, but in some cases, you also are using a third-party plugin that's adding all sorts of custom fields, and you're not sure what the name of the field is. For example, you want to use this post grid to show uh, events on your website and you're using an event plugin and you're not sure what custom field it's using for the date, you could turn on that debug to show the exact name. Let's do this once again for the email. So I'm going to open custom uh, meta two and I'm going to write in over here email. And now you can see we're showing both of these. This is looking pretty awesome. And what I'm gonna do is just change the icon for these. So they have a couple of options. You can uh, upload an icon from the icon library. You can upload an SVG. You can even add uh, some text before if you need to, and you can also uh, convert these uh, to a date if needed. So sometimes you wanna change that out. So the first one is for the phone number. I'm gonna just search for maybe a phone icon. Let's say this one. And this one is for the email. Let's do envelope. I think that's going to look good. So this is starting to look pretty cool and advanced. So the next part I want to talk about is the sequence entrance animation. What this does, it animates the items one by one in a sequence with a delay and just to give a subtle and micro animation inside of the website. The cool part I like about this feature is that it can be used with filters and that's probably the next part what I'm going to show. So we're going to set this up. So I'm just gonna go for the most uh, common one, which is appear. And you can see that now when it loads on the page, each item is going to appear one by one which looks pretty awesome. Now, uh, you can customize this, of course, with all sorts of settings. Each different animation has different settings. The important settings are the duration of the animation and the steps between. That's the delay between each item. I'm not gonna touch this because the defaults look pretty good. So that's pretty awesome. Now, the next part, what I'm going to show is let's jump back into general. I want to edit this a little bit. So what I'm going to do over here is in the number of items, I'm going to set it to uh, three or let's see, four. You know what? Let's leave that at four. But what I'll do is I'll change the gap to 20 because I think the gap is too much over here. So that's looking pretty good. Now, as you can see, by default, the grid is set to show 10 items. Now, in my case, when showing just four, eh, I might want to show only four or only eight or maybe even 12, but 10 doesn't look too good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over here into post query, back into post query. That's the same part where we determined which post to show. And I'm going to change this to eight just for example purposes, so you can understand what that does. And now you can see that this is fitting in nicely. 
some of you are probably asking yourself, hmm, wait, but what if I have more posts like I just showed? I mean, I have a lot more team members than just eight. And that's the case where we want to add pagination. Now, to add pagination is really, really simple. What we're going to do is going to post pagination and filtering. And over here, I'm going to select use pagination widget. And over here, I'm going to enable post filtering. So I've done two steps over here. And now we can add the pagination widget. So in the widgets pane, I'm going to search for pagination. It's called post pagination, drag and drop that inside. Now take in mind that in the back end, this doesn't work. It's just a visual presentation. So you can uh, sort of uh, design it and style it. And this pagination widget has a lot of styling options, a lot more styling options than default ones. So that's pretty cool. I'm not going to go into all of this, but you can see it's pretty advanced. And even in, not in the style, you can see that it has all sorts of options that maybe uh, you had a rough time trying to edit if you're trying to use other plugins. So I'm going to click update to save and to test this, what we need to do is preview the page. So the page is saved. I'm going to preview the page. And when it's, it's loaded, you can see that it's using the sequence animation and under here now it has calculated how many pages there are actually inside of this post grid populated by the custom post source. So, and you can see that each time that you uh, navigate between a page, and uh, it's going to animate. So that's pretty cool as well, right? So awesome. The next part uh, is going to be to add filters. Now we have a lot of types of filters. So you're going to need to decide which ones uh, best suit your needs. But the most common one I can say is called the tabs filter. So let's just drag and drop that over here on the top. And by default, if I jump into term selection, you can see that it's loading in the post type posts and the taxonomy is category, which is not our case. So our case is we're using a custom post type. So these as well, can support custom post types. And uh, this is the taxonomy. We have just one, so that's the one that's available over here. So that's pretty cool. Again, to test this, I'm going to click update. And I'm going to preview the page once it's loaded over here. And you can see that if I want to the user to be able to filter this grid, how easy that was. I mean, that was super easy to add this. And I'm just going to click developer and that's going to filter all the team members that are associated with the developer field. Now that's kind of hard to see over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back into my post grid and inside of layout, we have an option over here that's called show categories over here. I'm going to write only the main category and now it's going to add sort of a label to each one of these, which can also link to uh, the custom, a custom archive page. So I didn't exactly mention this earlier, but if you wanted, you could create this with the pagination, with the filter into an archive template, and it will work as an archive template. So later on, if you want to do that as well and not include this in just a regular page, you can do that as well. In that case, if you're going to do it, what you need to select in post query is uh, not custom posts, but a current query post. That's what you need to select when you're doing an archive page. So I think uh, this is starting to look pretty good. The next part I'm going to show is how to connect this to a dynamic pop-up. So first of all, a small explanation what a dynamic pop-up is. That's like sort of a quick view of the post. If you don't want the user to navigate to a different page, you want to leave them on the same page and sort of have easy navigation inside of that page. And you can do it with the dynamic pop-up. 
So I'm just going to search for the dynamic pop-up. It's called dynamic post pop-up widget. And you can put it down here above the pagination or under it. It doesn't really matter. And over here, you need to tell it which template to load. So I created a template earlier. And of course, you're going to need to have Elementor Pro for this to create the template. But I'm going to select the team member template over here. And what I'm going to do to connect the post grid with this part, so I'm going to click on the post grid. And over here inside of layout, we need to go over here to the button open type and change it from post link to dynamic pop up. Now, this post will know that when clicking on the link over here, you will open that template inside of a pop-up. Now, you're probably asking yourself, hmm, how can I see this pop-up in the editor if I need to design the size, the, the alignment, and stuff like that? So that's why we made the debug. Make sure that you notice that right now I'm editing the pop-up widget. And over here, I'm just going to click Show Pop-up. And that pop-up is going to show. Now it's going to show sort of a random post inside of here. And that's why we made this part where you can decide which post to show. So I'm just going to try to get a different one of these team members. I just wrote their name. And now it's going to show that team member inside of my pop-up which is pretty awesome. And there's a lot of styling options over here, but just for example purposes, I'm gonna change that to 800. You can see it has arrows, you can place them wherever you want. You have a close button. Just for example, I'm gonna move that close button. Let's align it to the right. Awesome. So we have these arrows. You can also place them wherever you want. You can look in our demo how we did it. Just don't want to take too much time for styling. So we got this set up. Now I can go back into debug mode and close that pop up so it won't interfere with my editing. And by the way, you have an edit template, a quick edit template over here. Let's click on that just uh, uh, so you can see how that looks, how I created this template. It's actually a single post template. So you start adding fields. Of course, all the fields need to be dynamic fields. So this is the featured image. This is the taxonomy, stuff like that. This is going to be a link to the post, but that's how you edit it. You can add, take off, or bring more fields inside of here. Awesome. So we have our pop-up set up. Let's save the page and preview everything and see if it's working. So over here, I'm going to click read more. And now there's a pop-up. How cool is that? I mean, that's pretty much amazing. So that's how that works. And let's see it again. And you can also navigate over here. And this pop-up has a lot of design options. I mean, you could even add a loader over here that will show uh, when it's moving between the posts and stuff like that. So that's pretty, pretty cool. And this is looking pretty awesome. I'm gonna close that. And the next part, or to finish this tutorial up, I know it's kind of long. I hope you're, you guys are still with me. And I'm just going to show some of the styling options. So over here inside of layout, we have alignment. I'm not going to touch that one. We have item radius. So let's change that to 20 pixels just to make those rounded. We can go inside of content or let's go back to layout and add a shadow to these. So they will pop up a little bit. We can make the shadow a little bit more subtle. Let's jump into the content. This is this area. We can change the padding to 20. And I'll change the background to white so it will look a lot cleaner. And you can see there's a lot of different types of settings over here. 
side of the image. This is a pretty cool feature. So you can see that I can change the height of the image, but many times you want to preserve an aspect ratio. So we added over here an option for ratio. And if you choose one by one, it's going to be a perfect square. So that's a pretty nifty kind of feature that we've added, which I really, really like. We have the category, which is over here. So let's make that a lot smaller. Let's say 10 pixels, looking better. Can give that sort of a color also. Let's go to the title. I'm going to use a global font over here. It's a bit big. So we can start playing around with the size. You can also space between the different types of elements so they won't be so close to each other. Additional data over here. So there's a lot of sort of uh, options over here. Let's just change it to black. Let's give it also a small font size so it won't be so big. And to do to do maybe move it a little bit. That's this one. Move that down a little bit. And the button. So the button I'm going to make also I'm going to space it out. I'm going to make the topography a lot smaller. That might be a little bit too much. Round it up and let's just give it a subtle gray color. Awesome. So that was just a quick example of how I can style this. This is looking pretty good. And I think that's it. So let's wrap this tutorial up. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments and Maybe click subscribe if you liked it and feel free to contact us and we'll try to help you achieve your elementor goals. See you in the next video. Bye bye.